Well, welcome back to another Nevada morning. We're out raking this last pivot. So the one right here and then the other one over there are both done. Everything's bailed and stacked off. So there's one right, a pivot right there next to this one. We'll be bailing and stacking that one today. And then we'll rake this, we're raking this one today. Hopefully bail it tomorrow morning and then we're done here and we can head home. So. Not a huge amount of hay, but. They're going for a higher quality hay instead of uh, quantity. They're going for quality, not quantity, I guess. You could put it that way. So this is a seven tower pivot. So these outside passes are pretty long. So here comes the other rake. We're running two of them. That one is the same rig, different tractor. This tractor's a lot nicer. This is a 6,000 series. That other one's a 5,000. So it's smaller. It's a 75 horse. This one's 120. So there's not a huge difference in horsepower, especially pulling a rake. It's really just the frame and everything of the the tractor is smaller so yeah this one rides a lot smoother but I ran the other one the first two pivots so I get this one for this pivot and I ran it in the last one too here's some antelope I've been amazed at the amount of wildlife that I've seen out here. Back home, if you see a deer every once in a while, it's pretty cool, but out here, there have been so many antelope, and I hope that's an antelope, and I'm not getting it confused. I know there's a lot of animals that look like that. So, we're raking everything in between the pivot towers so the swathers or swather there's only one but they ended up with they all in between all of them they fit 11 passes and since it's an odd number you end up with one extra row you have to do so all right doing this last pass here and then we're done raking the other rake's been gone and he's trying to bail this pivot over here, but I guess it's at 20% moisture. So, probably gonna have to give it a little more time. I'll know probably about it. We will have to give it a little more time. But as long as it goes at some point today, this afternoon, we will be sitting good. We just want that pivot bailed and stacked today. So, I guess we'll see how the day plays out. Alrighty, so as you can see it's dark now. Uh, we kept trying throughout the day to bail this pivot and it just would not be quite dry enough. It was always right on the edge. That's, that's a wet bail, isn't it? This other side, yep. One of the spray cans on the baler is empty on the side that I see first so I have to look on the other side so it's about 930 now here's the baler steamer we are using steam now all of a sudden once pretty much once the sun goat went down on it. Once the sun went down it really dried out. So we 
are running steam now. I might have to. I don't know. It, it tells him the moisture. I might have to mention something because a lot of these are coming out on the wetter side. I think it's if it's above 18% moisture, that's when it sprays. So. I always wondered what the lights would be like on this thing. But you can actually see pretty well. A lot of good light out the front. I think that if I were to buy one of these, I'd probably add a couple lights facing out the corners just to help you spot bales. I hope I'm getting enough of the back. I'm not paying attention to what I'm filming when I turn the camera around. So, at this point, I'm kind of keeping up with the baler, so I'm just driving in the circle, picking up all the dry bales, and then I'll come back for the wet ones later. Okay, I brought a load of wet bales over here. There's eight of them there. My other stack is over a little bit farther. But I thought I'd show real quick what it looks like with the lights on. So, on the pole types, you get these back ones. There's one on each side. There and over there. Oh, that one's kind of facing nothing. Maybe aim it at the stack would be helpful. There we go. And then you got one little light up there, which when I first saw that, I was like, that thing's going to be useless. Yeah, but it actually lights everything up just fine. You can see everything you need to see. It's really just this receiving table that that needs to shine on. And then that first stack there. And then there's a light here for the grapple, claw, whatever you want to call it. And then you got six work lights up on the front. These are more road lights down there, but... Yeah, I've always wondered what the lights on these would be like. They're really good. Like I mentioned before, I think I would personally put a light on the back corners of the cab just to kind of shine out into this area. Because you got up here good, back there, but there's nothing right here. So, yeah. But... Well, I figure I'll just continue this video, end it tomorrow, because I'm going to quit for the night now. I just got lost in a circle field. I thought I was, I was driving around a corner looking for the entrance, the driveway, to come straight out of the corner of the field right here. And I couldn't find it, and I got all confused, and I realized I was in the other corner of the field, so... I'm going to call it at that, because if I can get lost in a circular field, then that's not a good thing, so I'm going to take this thing back to the house and stay in and get back at it tomorrow. I think he's going to keep trying to bail, finish that pivot up, and then tomorrow I'll have to stack that, and then we got one more pivot to do, and hopefully we can do that in the morning instead of having to wait until the evening. Then we can go home tomorrow after. Also, being up in the cab, I really like the red uh, lighting in here. You got these two lights on the sides I think are pretty cool. And if you have your switch turned on when you open them, then they turn white and then it lights up the whole cab or at least the front, so you have a nice exit. Then once 
once you close the door, they turn right again. Everything kind of goes dark. So yeah, I actually really like this stacker wagon, and it's it's lighting's cool. I love the orange lights on the bed. Those are kind of cool. But, yeah, I'm gonna go home and go to bed. Well, good morning, everyone. It's the next morning. Out here, stacking these bales off this pivot. We got everything, I think, except the inside two towers bailed last night. So, when we got over here, only the gazika, the thing that sprays the that's what reads the moisture I don't know if I mentioned that before or not in this video but that's what they have on the baler that reads the moisture and then when it reads uh, higher moisture in the bale if the average is higher then it'll spray some paint on the side and only one side was working over here. The other can ran out. So you have to look on both sides of the bale. Sorry, I'm tired and I can't find think of things to say. I know what I want to say, but I can't find the words. This bale, well, that's a wet one. It's got a little dot of orange on there. So, find one more bale and I got a load. All right, so we had to wait a few hours, or a couple hours, I guess. And now I'm actually doing the baling. We traded off for this last pivot. So, we're also running a steamer, so that's what you look at, is just the steamer. The baler, everything is on these cameras. The top two are the different sides of the header, and then the bottom left is uh, the, the nodders, the flags, and then the bottom right is just out the back seeing your bales come out. Then this one is the gazika. That's your moisture. It tells you the moisture in that. So like right now we're at 12.4 percent. And then this big old thing is the steamer. So yeah there's a there's a lot on there. are adding a little bit of steam to the hay and then it'll we don't have to worry about losing as many leaves it's like putting dew on it so I like the idea of it I think I like the way we do it better though you just go out in the evening and bail because having a steamer is just another machine that can break down and stuff. And then, not only that, I like to be able to see the baler. I don't like relying on cameras. All right. We got basically the outside tower on the pivot. I think the pivot track's in between these next two passes. So we're moving right along. I don't know why I look around behind me. You just get off my row and you can't see anything anyway. I have to use the cameras, which are kind of dusted up right now. But yeah, we're in close. Really close. There goes a the stacker. A 
looks like he's only doing eight bales at a time. We're both new to stacking with, especially with the that style. I can do pretty good with our pull type, but that, it functions the same, but there's definitely things that are different about that one compared to uh, the pull type. And yeah, whenever we try to make stacks six bales high, they always fall over. And I don't know if it's us with the stacker or what, or if it's the baler. Kind of see the whole train. I don't know how well. That's the only time you ever see the balers when you turn around. So, all right. It looks like six passes left. Two over there and four over there. Good, good. You can say in the camera right there, the stacker wagons caught up to me. And there's really no windrow here. But he's he's all ready to get the bale as soon as it falls out of the chamber. It's probably gonna be a while. There's just nothing here to push it out. Okay, so I've coming around, the bale just fell out of the chamber, but I guess it got out far enough, uh, it had paint on it, which means it's too wet to go in the normal stack, we're putting that, and I think it's in a, I don't know where he's putting it, there's a couple little stacks over there with paint on them, so, it's going separately, so... He couldn't catch it as it came out, but would have been funny. So here he's gonna try to do it again. Okay. Finish that last pivot, and there's three passes over here that are so small that you can't even see them at the moment. But they were too wet to bail this morning, so I'm gonna bail them now. And then there's a bale over there that fell apart when I tried to grab it with the stacker wagon, so I kind of spread it out. So I'm gonna try to rebail that. And then we're done. Okay, I just I finished bailing these windrows. I turned this pivot on, or at least I got it walking, and then they're getting the well turned on for it. But I guess I'll show the outside. So, if you want to see this in action from the outside, I made a short. One of those YouTube shorts. Uh, it's already up. By the time this comes out, it'll have been up for a couple weeks. So, you can see that when I wasn't running it. So, it's just a... This is the steamer. These red tanks here. There's one on the other side, too. And there's a boiler in the middle. And so it just takes the water and boils it and the steam is sent out through these hoses down to the header where it is injected on the hay as it goes into the baler and then keeps the leaves on so I don't know it works good I think I'd rather just do it the way that we do it uh, on our farm where we just go out in the evening or in the morning and bale it with a natural dew instead of an artificial dew. But 
is what it is for an operation like this where you got these big pivots. Maybe you'd want something like this, especially where the dews don't last too long here. So, anyway, I hope these videos were okay. I kind of would start the day thinking I knew how it was going to go and then plans would change. The hay wouldn't be dry enough to bale or whatever, so these videos are kind of jumbled around. But, get in this one here. So I'm going to go rebale that bale over there. And then I think we're done. And we'll get heading home. It's about a four and a half hour drive. So even though we're in northern Nevada, it still takes a drive. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next video.